what we have now is food that are so much processed that it's no good to the body, but it's good to the taste, it's good to the mind. They have addictive substances in them and it makes us addicted. And so we keep eating and we want more and more and more. I'm going to show you very briefly today what people have found out. In fact, the people who found it out are people who are addicted to food. Did you know that they, um, they have a group called um, Food Addicts Anonymous? Anybody knows that? Food Addicts Anonymous? You probably heard about Alcoholic Anonymous, AA. And they started with their 12 step, and there are a lot of things. You have Sex Addicts Adi uh, Anonymous, but I'm concerned about food. Today we're dealing with food. As I said this morning, we're only staying with the first eight of the law, which is nutrition, which is the place where most of us are tempted and where we are defeated on the issue of food. Adam lost Eden. Adam and Eve lost Eden because of food. The second Adam won it back for us on the issue of food. So food is a big thing. Satan knows that we are weak when it comes to food, and he will keep tempting us. And there are two extremes. There are people who overeat, and there are people who undereat. <laughs> Both are bad. You've got to be to a place where you're enjoying what you eat, and we'll show you what the Bible says about that. So let's get into this. Fighting diseases with food. I hope this works well. Oh, it's working. So um, you will see that I kind of put this on the banner and keep using this because it drives home the point that God gave us the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I'm not ashamed to say this. I could, I'm boasting. I am part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And God gave this church a health message. Eight laws to defeat the eight top killer lifestyle diseases. We're blessed. The Jews were blessed, but they squandered their blessing. I pray that we would not squander our blessing. God has given us now 160 years. I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist. Didn't know about health practices until recently. You grew up in the Caribbean eating meat and eating fish and overeating and all these things were normal. That's the normal thing we do. But when you learn from, from books like Ministry of Healing, from Councils on Diets and Food, powerful two books, amazing how we could transform your life. So let's go. So eight laws of health to defeat eight killer diseases. You should take a picture of that, of the banner, and remind yourself that God gave you the tool, eight doctors, to help you fight. Let's go. I'm going backward. Okay, so we're going to start with each one of those eight. We're going to deal with the eight. This morning I mentioned them. Now we're going to deal with them. Coronary heart disease. I would like to have someone to read what we have there on the screen. Who would like to do that? I'll give you the mic. Okay, Sean. There's more. He said there's a mic. Yeah, let's, let's get another mic. Um, and maybe you, you'll be a reader tonight. To this, this evening, Shana, you, you'd be our reader. I mean, we could invite the congregation for anybody else. Yeah, no? you, you, you decide. Okay. I'll tell you when. Okay. So coronary artery disease. The term coronary art heart disease refers to disease which affects the blood vessels and the heart and is also sometimes known as heart disease. It includes diseases such as arteriosclerosis, where plaques build up and narrow the arteries, increasing the risk of heart attack or stroke resulting from a blood clot. Also included are heart conditions such as heart failure, arrhythmias, and heart valve problems. You see the description? Thank you, Shana. You're welcome. That is caused by how we eat and live. Stress can cause it. Food especially can cause that. And that's one of the leading cause of deaths in this country, heart disease. Crazy. Now, how do we, oh, to put all together, I had it flying in one by one. How do we fight heart disease? There are some foods that you can use to fight heart disease. These are the foods. We have flaxseed, we have
have grapes, we have walnuts, we have soybeans, we have strawberries, and barley. Six food. There are many others, mm -hmm. but these are the six top ones that Amen. you can use to fight heart disease. So if you have tendency for heart disease or you have heart disease, of course you have to do other things, but at least when it comes to your food, when you shop, you make sure you have these things. Mm. And not when you cook, you have these things mm. because you're dealing with heart disease. You want to prevent it. It's better to prevent than to cure. Yes. Eating, here's a health tip. Eating a plant-based diet will help you live longer, longer and, reduce and reduces your risk of cardiovascular disease. That's a scientifically proven yes. fact. That's not what only Ellen White says. It's scientifically proven that when you eat a plant-based diet, and listen, plant-based diet does not mean dinner rolls. No. Dinner rolls is not, it may have come from the plant, but, but the so process that took it there, it's worse maybe than the meat. I, I, it's not scientific pro, but I'm saying that. So you want to get it in its natural, natural state form. as possible. And look, it's there. You will, you will see some people who are claiming, that, oh, it's too expensive, we can't get it. You will find that it's cheaper to do. You, 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 it's better off if you eat less and eat quality than you eat bulk eat garbage. and you eat yes. So let's go to the next one now. Uh, according to our list here, we have to go to cancer, right? Let's cancer. What is cancer? Cancer, a condition that results from abnormal cell growth and can start in any place and spread through the tissues of the body. Some cancers form tumors or masses of tissues, while others may not. This disease interferes with the normal functioning of the body and if not controlled, may result in death. There are almost a hundred different kinds of cancer. And listen, somebody's thanks again. This, this is crazy. We lost, we buried. Last week I went to, the, to funeralize um, our youth ministry's uh, admin assistant. Kathy Davis died 52 years, 53 years old. Cancer. She, she was just feeling a little bit funny in December. She went and saw the doctor. Pancreatic cancer. And the doctor said, you have limited time. Within three months, she's gone. A healthy woman before that. So, things will happen even though you do the best eating. But you could prevent some things if you do proper, um, make proper choices. Mm. So, let me, ask, let me ask you a question. What foods do you think will help you to fight against cancer? A couple people. What? The cruciferous. Maybe some people don't know what you mean. What you mean by that? Huh? Cabbage and broccoli. All right. Good. Anybody else? What food can help you to fight against cancer? Green leafy. All right. Yes. That's all plants. Let's, let's find out. Sour sap. Okay. That's a big one. All right. These are some of the foods that could help you fight. We have turmeric. We have the broccoli, as you mentioned, blueberries, garlic, kale, carrots. So if you, if you have some kinds of tendency, of course, if you have the cancer, you can't use this alone to fight. You have to do all the things, right? Mm -hmm. But these are things that will help you to prevent. prevent the cancer. And we, we, we are trying to prevent. If you have these diseases, then you have to be treated you know, more urgently, more aggressively. But, more aggressively. but we're looking at, at, at proper ways. Really what we're trying to do is to show you that when you go to a plant-based diet, there's so many benefits. And plant-based diet, I mentioned it today, will help you defeat these killer diseases. And this is how. We just dealt with cardiovascular disease, heart disease. Now we're looking at cancer. Some people don't like the smell or the taste of garlic or turmeric. Oh. And broccoli, they don't want to see that. They may use a little blueberry, 
carrots, mm -mm, kale, mm -mm. so you see when you don't eat these kinds of food, what happens? You don't have the nutrients to fight against these, this problem. So you want to mix it up. Whatever your anxieties and trials, spread out your cases before the Lord. Your spirit will be braced for endurance. The Bible says, casting all your cares upon me for I care for you. All right, let's move to the next disease. What's the next disease on the, on the, on the banner? Diabetes. Okay, diabetes. Let's find out about diabetes now. What oh, is diabetes? I hope I can see it. Um, diabetes is a complex condition that affects how the body uses glucose, resulting in too much glucose in the blood if diabetes is not well controlled or left untreated, it leads to health complications such as blindness, kidney failure, loss of circulation in the extremities resulting in amputation, and increased risk of heart attack and stroke. So you see, thank you. You see how they're connected now? Mm -hmm. They're connected. And I have seen a lot of people who die and who suffer amputation, as was mentioned in my introduction. I'm also a hospital chaplain, and I have firsthand in, uh, experience. I even work one year, um, of course not full time, um, in a dialysis unit for one year, and I've seen people dying. You have all these chairs, and you'll come one, one day and see a person's chair is empty, a person die. And then a new person will come in. And this could be prevented if you eat the right kind of food. By the way, uh, Shana, you should receive this. We're sending out some email. One of our nurses, very impressed and passionate about fighting diabetes. She's working with the CDC. She starts her own company. And she's offering free diabetes uh, education and treatment um, uh, um, we publish it. You should get the flyer. If not, send me an email. So it's free for you. This is the first. She's only offering it free now. Later on, of course, they will charge your insurance. And for those who don't have insurance, I think it will be free then. But take advantage of this. If you have diabetes or you're pre-diabetic, um, work with her. She's in New York, but it's online training. Online training. Excellent work. All right. What foods do you think? should help you fight against diabetes. Bitter melon. What? Bitter melon. Well, I didn't get that. Bitter melon. Better mil bitter melon. Bitter melon. Carilla, we say Carilla. Bitter melon. Bitter melon. All right. What else? String beans. What else? Dandelion. All right. All right. What? Cinnamon. Okay. Okay. Here's some recommendation. And the recommendation I give you here Taken from this book that I'll show at the end, it shows you how you could fight against 70 plus diseases with food. But I'm just sharing these eight with you because these are the eight top killer. Let's find some food now. Here we go. Avocados, apples, black beans, olives, blueberries. Blueberries show up there again, right? So. Blueberries could fight more than one, and you will find that some foods could fight more than one. And potatoes. Check this out now. A 10-minute walk after each meal helps move sugar out of the blood stream and into the cells. You know, all of us, we just ate. Check what happened. We ate downstairs, we sat, we chat a little bit, we come and we sit again. You know what I'll do in some churches? We'll go out for a walk when it's good. And if it's not too, if it's too cold outside, we walk around the church. And people find immediate help in just walking around the church. One church we went, and one guy, he was a physical fitness guy. He said, I'll, I'll lead this. I'll lead this. And he, he led us around the church. And we were walking, we were singing, and we were just walking. Everybody, when they came back, they said, wow, we feel so energetic. We feel so alive. You need to do a digestive walk after your meal. Don't eat and sit. That's why eating and watching television is not good. You become a couch potato. And you know Gen Z's and even the millennials, it's more prevalent among them. 
the, the younger generations are more unhealthy than the older than their parents because of the lifestyle social media and um, the lifestyle habits little time games that were played on the on the field on the court are now played on the computer screen you know instead of playing soccer out there you play it on your phone so you need to get up and and, and move exercise is good so a 10 minute walk just 10 minutes all right let's go what's the next disease hypertension somebody wants to read that for us hypertension this condition is commonly known as high blood pressure the force with which the blood pushes against the wall of the arteries as it flows through them is known as blood pressure abnormal blood pressure will be any reading above 120 over 80. over time abnormal blood pressure causes damage to the blood vessels leading to complications such as heart attack heart failure strokes kidney disease, eye damage, peripheral artery disease, and aneurysms. You see how they're connected? They're all connected. So you get one, you get multiple, and some of the foods are so connected too, they help you fight against all. So this is serious. When you look at that, it's serious. And sometimes you go to the hospital and you have 130 over 90, the doctor said you're okay. It's okay because they've seen people with so high um, blood pressure and they'll tell you you're okay everybody should every home should have a blood pressure machine it's so cheap now under 30 dollars you can get one it's called a, what kind of killer silent killer right so we got to be careful with that um, you're not gonna you're not gonna stress yourself out of it but um, some families have tendency for that is heredity hereditary and some people, your eating habits, your lifestyle will cause you to have that. So you want to be careful. Now, what foods do you think can help us fight against hypertension? Listen, if you guess wrong, it's a good thing. Because you will learn from your mistake. Right? If you guess right, it's, even, it's a good thing too. Because you'll say, wow, I know this stuff. Then you go ahead and do it. So let's try it. What's good for hypertension? Garlic. Garlic, uh-huh. What? Celery. Okay, you just had some downstairs. Did you take the celery? You took some? Good, good, good for you. What else? Good for beets? Okay. Ginger? Okay. All right. Uh, let's, let's find out. Let's find out. Beets. Who said? Somebody said beets, right? Good. Peas. Grapefruit. Spinach. Gar somebody said garlic. I heard that. Somebody said it somewhere. And black berries. So you see how you have it? You have vegetables and fruits. So it's not going to be a boring life of only vegetable or only fruits. It's a mixture. It's a variety that God created. So, and then there's a little health tip here. Those who take Christ at his word will find peace and quietude. You know, when you're hypertensive, you know, you know, you're, you're kind of tense, right? Prayer helps. You'll be surprised to see what prayer can do. I put it to a test. I tested my blood pressure one morning, and um, I said, you know what? I'm just going to go and pray and relax myself and then go back and test it. And it went like about five points down. Thank God. You will take medication to bring it down. And the medication will, will do all kinds of crazy things to your body. Prayer. Prayer. Meditation really helps. Right? That's why we have one of the laws of health is trust in God. Trusting in God really helps. You can cast all your care, all your troubles upon Jesus. And he could relieve you of that. All right? Let's, what's the next, what's the next um, disease? Osteoporosis. What is that? What is that? Somebody tell us. Osteoporosis, a condition in which bone mass decreases and bone becomes weak and brittle. This occurs when new bone tissue is not replaced fast and the old bone tissue is removed and may be as a result of hormonal changes and mineral deficiency. The risk of fractures is greatly increased with fractures to the hip, wrist, and spine occurring most frequently. It is so common for people to say, thank you, sis, that I got a new hip. <laughs> I got a new knee. 
they're talking about it as though they're buying new clothes. Right? Shana was telling me a story of, you know, uh, how, how do you tell a story? Tell, tell a story your way. <laughs> I, I was telling him as a young nurse, I was, when my patient would fall from the bed to the floor, I was so puzzled because the x-ray would come back, they, they have a fractured hip, femur, and I'm saying it's just from the bed to the floor, I can't understand this. And I remember my aunt in Jamaica is going to the market and she dropped from top of the hill, rolled down to the bottom of the hill, brushed herself off and got walk down the market. I said, there's something wrong. And then we're giving our patients all these milk and cheese. And if we see dairy is strengthening their bones, I said, something don't add up here. And then I became interested in health and I read the book, Councils on Diet and Food, where the pen of inspiration says that dairy milk and cheese and all these things is not fit for human consumption she says that this milk i'm using the milk as an example is used to fatten a calf it's not for humans and i said look at this this makes sense to me now this is not something that we should be eating but then i was in my patient's room one day and diane sawyer came on the 6 30 news and she said you know, before she retired I always listen to the 630 News when I can. She said, new findings from the medical world says that dairy products, instead of strengthening the bone as it's always recommended, is actually leaching the calcium out of your bones, making it dry and brittle. And I said, look how God answered me questioning all these puzzles I was trying to figure out. Here, the God. And I'm saying to myself, it strengthens my faith that in Israel there is a prophet. Thank God for the pen of inspiration and that we can confirm the words that the prophets written over a hundred years ago. But even if I don't have confirmation, I take God at his word. Amen. Amen. And what you could do, that book is a powerful book. Um, you can probably have a study with it. You could do it on Zoom and you can read through the book and learn from it. Now, we know that the foods that we will use to fight that is not going to be milk. Because Shana told you already. It's not going to be milk. So what else do you think can help you fight against osteoporosis? Broccoli, what else? Green leafy vegetable, what else? Spinach, okay. All right, let's find out, let's find out. Chia seed, cabbage, almonds, soybean, cantaloupe. Raisin. You know, it's so easy to make almond milk. Oh my goodness, so easy. You could make it in 10 minutes. Very easy. I could even tell you now, but um, can't tell you everything. It's easy. You could make it on the spot. It will be faster for you to make some almond milk than for you to go milk the cow. <laughs> or for you to go to the supermarket and buy it. Easy, very easy. And it's, it helps you to fight against... It gives you the nutrients you need to have strong bones as opposed to um, extracting from it, as you said, that the cow, cow's milk does. So put your trust in the Lord and be not afraid. Fear could weaken the bones. All right, let's go. What's the next disease? Stroke. What's that? Who wants to tell us? Sorry, stroke. You know, before you read it, um, yeah, what strokes is? You, you, yeah. I call you sis, but you, 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 it's small. That's fine. What is stroke? Strokes are like having hearts, like having pro like something with your brain, and like having too much, too much problems, mm -hmm. too much stress, and all that stuff. You're right. You're right. Put your hands together for her. She has an idea. <laughs> You know, um, I, I have the privilege, I have the privilege of, of doing a reflection meditation prayer every Friday morning at 8 o'clock at the North Shore University Hospital Emergency Unit. And just after I finish that, the stroke um, education team will come and they will talk about stroke, explaining to the nurses and the doctors and so on. So I will stick around and listen to their presentation. So I asked her, I said, you know, in, in, in the layman's term, what is stroke? She said it's a heart attack of the brain. I said, that helps. 
for the layman, a heart attack of the brain. But let's get the real definition here. Let's go. A stroke is a condition affecting the arteries leading to and within the brain. Stroke occurs when the blood supply to the brain is blocked or when a blood vessel in the brain ruptures. Symptoms include sudden weakness or numbness to the face, arm or leg, or sorry, arm or leg on the side of the body, sudden vision loss, sudden speech difficulty, sudden mobility problems, or sudden headaches. Experiencing a stroke may lead to par paralyzed vision problems, memory loss, speech and language problems. Thank you so much. You, you have a Trini, Trini background? From Trinidad. Trinidad? <laughs> I heard that Trini accent. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, anybody has family or friends or somebody you know has stroke? It's so, you know, it's so sad to see how them, you know, how they struggle. Uh, you know, they were good. Sometimes they're, it, it, things change. So what can we do to prevent stroke? What foods can we eat to prevent stroke or to fight stroke? Food, food. What food? We're dealing with food to fight this disease. But sleep is good. You're right. That's, that's the, the, the rest part of the new start, the laws of health. Very important. By the way, since we say that, we're not going to deal with all, but um, since he mentioned sleep, how many hours of sleep should you, an adult, a normal adult should have every night? Six hours? At least eight? Yeah, they say about seven. Seven. If you could do eight is good. Six to eight, seven is the, in the mid-range. Seven hours of rest. How many of you getting that? I could tell you I'm guilty I didn't get that last night. I went to bed last night. After 11, I got up five. <laughs> so that's not seven. I'm guilty. And I was, we have a habit when we welcome the Sabbath every Friday afternoon, we will share what's your highlight, what's your low light. Everybody share a highlight. Everybody share mixed participation. And my low light was, I could have gotten some more sleep last night. And not long after that, I, it was a Sabbath evening, and I went to bed late. Why? I was trying to work on this. Put my final touches for you. I add some things at the end. This was there before, but I add some other things. New things that I got by reading. All right? I figure since it is nice for me and helpful to me, it might be helpful to you, right? So I could blame you for not getting my sleep. But would that help me? Would I help me? No, it would not. So what can we do to fight against stroke? What foods can we eat? Anybody? Yeah. Sesame seed? All right. Remember, if you're wrong, you learn. If you're wrong, you will learn. Anybody else? Cayenne pepper? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Garlic? All right, let's find out. Let's find out. Here we go. Garlic is there. Fig. Figs. Pumpkin seed. Strawberry appears again. Black eyed peas. If you're from the Caribbean, you know about black eyed peas, right? Or if you're from South. I don't think people from... I don't know if all the people know about black eyed peas very well. We used to grow that thing in Guyana. And then you have barley. So barley, garlic, fig. This year, I planted a fig tree in, in our yard. Hopefully, by three years, I'll get fig. <laughs> and I'll, I'll fight against stroke. Yeah, yeah, this, they, love, they love the fig. Oh, my goodness. You know, I pray for them sometimes. I planted, I'm a gardener too, right? And so I planted garden. We will plant to, we will preserve our food just by freezing it for now until I have more time when I retire. But we just put it in the freezer, and we have enough to last us through. You know, um, this year we have guests, so it's going to, you know, it's not going to take us through. But between me and my wife, it'll take us through. And sometimes my problem will be, how can I finish this up so that I could reap the new ones? So you could do that, and our yard is not big. It's a small yard, right? So you could plant stuff there. And I was going this way with that. Um, Right where I live, there are some, a lot of trees there, and they have this acorn. So the squirrel prefer that. So I'm so happy. What? 
They don't want to eat corn anymore. They go for that. But you know what? I'm going to get it before them. Unless they work in the night. Um, so did you know the most effective way to prevent a stroke is to lower blood pressure and reduce dietary fat. Where do you get a lot of dietary fat? From what? From animal products, right? The plant products don't give you bad fat, you know. You have good fats, but from the animal thing, these pizzas, right? These french fries and these burgers that we like, they're dangerous for us, right? So you want to avoid that. And these processed food, the only country in the world, and thank God for them, that put a tax on ultra-processed food is Colombia. We know Colombia because of drugs, right? That's the first thing you, you know when you think about Colombia. But they, this year, this year or late last year, they passed a law that they're putting a tax just like they're putting a tax on cigarette and alcohol on ultra-processed food. Because ultra-processed food is dangerous for us. Ultra-processed means food that are went through a lot of processed, like flour and sugar and salt and oil and, and vegetarian substitute meat. Yes, the ones we sell at the conference office. Yes, indeed. The dinner rolls, for example. I love dinner rolls. I'm, I'm learning now to avoid it and maybe completely get it out my, my way. We use that for holidays, dinner rolls, you know. Good. So um, these are the foods. Some of you are doing well taking pictures. All right. We dung to... That was backward. We finished stroke just now, right? We need to go to arthritis now. What is that? <clears throat> Tell us, somebody. Who is reading? Arth arthritis. Arthritis is an inflammation of one or more joints. joints. While there are many kinds of arthritis, we... Rheumatoid. Rheumatoid art. Osteo osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis are most common. Rheumatoid. Rheumatoid arthritis is in autoimmune. Autoimmune dis disease that targets the joint linens, li linens. Osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis. Wait, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. You go ahead. Okay. They Occurs give you the hardest when one to read. I was saying the same. This is the hardest one. You want me to read it? <laughs> Go ahead. You're doing well. Finish it up. And the cartilage. The, and the cartilage that covers the end, the end of the bones st starts to wear uh, away. Sympathies of symptoms. symptoms of arthritis includes redness, swelling, stiffness, and pain. Amen. Yep. Some people think there is no cure. And some people live with it, and it gets worse and worse. So they continue their same dietary habits, right? Um, inflammation is the, one of the major cause of many illnesses. Inflammation of the brain can give you what? Alzheimer's and all these mental health disease. Inflammation, serious problem. And it's caused by the, even the food we eat and how we eat it and when we eat it and overeating. But what are some of the foods that could help us fight against this? Turmeric, yes. What else? Ginger, yes. What else? What? Garlic again, yes. What? Strawberries. Oh, you like strawberries? Let's find out. Pineapples. Went to Costco this week, and I got three pineapples. You know why? They were selling it for $1.99. Come on, big uh, pineapples. I bought three. I froze one already, cut it in small pieces, froze it to keep it for hard times. We cut up one to eat, and one is ripening a little bit more. It's cheap. It's good stuff. Pineapples, Brazil nuts, or sweet red peppers. I had some of that today. Kale, plums, and ginger. These are things you could find in the supermarket easily, right? All right. Avoid sugar consumption or added sugar. Avoid sugar. Consumption of added sugar increases inflammation in the human body. I don't 
know about that now. I can't comment. I have to research that. But um, this is something I should say also. I, so that's my answer. I don't know the answer to that. Um, but this is what I'll say. Um, not every food is good for every person. You've got to know yourself. Personally, I stay away from tomatoes. Today, I did not choose a tomato. Um, I eat the tomatoes when it's cooked. When it's cooked. Like, they say it activates the lycopene. And so, I stay away from the, from, the, from the raw ones because I read this book by Gondry called The Plant Paradox. And he talks about your blood type and what you should avoid. And from my blood type, I should avoid tomatoes. And it works. I don't miss it. So you, it could work with you. Um, sometimes some people talk about that, you know, uh, producing acids and whatever. But I'm not sure about inflammation in the tomatoes. I can't say about that. Yeah. You want to say about that? Sis. Yeah. The skin of the tomato, yes, you're right. Yeah, he, you're right. That's right. You, and the, the, the cucumbers is the same thing, the skin of the cucumber. But that's deeper stuff. I don't want it to go that deep now. For those who are just trying to, to um, think, you want to, yeah. 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 Yes. Right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's right. Gouts and so on with those things, right? Yeah, perfect. That's good. The nightshades. Correct. Yes? Yeah, red ones. They suggested red ones. I don't know why they suggested red, but, you know, that's what they found. Red ones. I like the colors, but they suggested red ones for this. All right? Let's move on. What's the next one we're looking at? The last one. You know, when I was presenting one time, uh, um, a surgeon came to me at one of the churches, and she said to me, you should have obesity as number one because obesity is the, is the root cause of all the rest. I said, okay, next time I paid for the banner, so I can't really change it now. <laughs> but um, I'm going to tell the folks. So let's go. What is obesity? Who wants to read that for us? Go ahead. A condition in which the weight of the individual is usually at least 20% more than what would be considered healthy. More calories are consumed than the body can use, and extra calories are stored as fat. Obesity uh, predisposes one to the life threatening conditions such as a diabetes hypertension heart attack cancer and increases risk of disabilities and death thank you so much so it looked like that sergeant was right right obesity caused all those things which is right you know i personally fight with my weight it's a battle for me because i love to eat i have to fight not to overeat and that's my battle and I think there's a lot of people's battle too yes 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 yeah yeah well, muscles are different. If, you have, if you're muscular and you, 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 you weigh more because of the muscle, that's a good thing. Muscles is a good thing. But we're talking about the normal people who don't really have these muscles on, but they have this excess fat. You know, that's the bad part. And we need to put on some muscles. A lot of all the people, they're focusing on only cardio exercises. You need to do some resistant exercise to build those muscles. Very important. So what food, what food could help us here? This is the one I kind of memorized because I am dealing with this. You know, like a couple of weeks ago, 
this couldn't fit me well. Now I'm so glad it's working good, right? Um, in fact, I came from a 44. This is like a 42. And then it, you know, came coming and going. Um, it's a challenge. And I can tell you, I was telling my daughter uh, during the week, I said, listen, I know so much about food because I've been through it. Medicating yourself with food and you name it, I could do it. All within the vegetarian realms. I used to eat meat too. So, um, all right. So what could help you here? What? What give you fiber? What specific ones? Uh, let's find out. Let's find out. You know it, but let's find out. Zucchinis, grapefruit, peaches, brown rice, garbanzo, and cashew. Well, now my wife will know. When I shop, I make sure these things are on the list. <laughs> when I garden, I make sure zucchini is planted. I even plant a peach tree this year. I want to stay there. I want to fight that. That's, that's where, out of all of them, that's where I want to fight. I, that's my problem. You look at me and say, oh, he's good, but it's a problem. So I focus on that. So when I go to shop at Costco, I make sure I get the grapefruit. Grapefruit, you will now know that in the fridge, we always have grapefruit because I'm fighting with it. And then peaches, well, now it's not a season, so you can't get it. Zucchini, I planted and um, kind of finished some. I have to get some cashew. I bought the big bag. I was so happy to see Costco bring back these beautiful raw cashew. I bought two bags instead. You know Costco brought it back, right? And 12 bucks. You can't beat that, right? Yeah, yeah, but you, you're not going to eat the whole bag. No, man, you're not going to eat the whole bag. And then garbanzo. We have that this morning. So now you're going to know some of my secrets. Uh, when, when we cook garbanzo in the home, I make sure I take out a little portion, put it in the freezer somewhere, hide it right down to the bottom. So that when I really need it, I just get it. So that's my little secret. So I, I already put away some from what we have. And everybody will eat and it will finish. And then when I need it, I get it. <laughs> you know? And um, brown rice. I make sure, told my wife, we're going to stop eating the regular rice. And of course we've been doing that, but we sometimes fall back. But now we have brown rice. So you know your situation, so get the food according. All right, this is it. That's the end. That's all it. But I have some bonus for you. I'll go this over very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. Can you stand, please? Can you stand a little bit? Anybody knows how to do an action chorus or something? Maybe we could raise our hands and you know, move our legs a little bit. Anybody know that? At the conference, I have my secretary will do chop, chop, chop and all kinds of things. Anybody know that? Can, we do, can you do, show us something that we can do? Huh? Real quick, like in two, three minutes. Come on, come on over, man. Father Abraham will take him. Abraham will work. Come, come, lead us out. We need a little break. We've been sitting too long. One hour. We're all going to sing. So, after two, one, two. Father Abraham and many. We're walking on the spot. We're walking on the spot. That Father Abraham and I am one of them and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right and Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons, and Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right and Father Abraham. Had many sons, had many sons, had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right and left and right foot, Father Abraham, had many sons, had many sons, had Father Abraham. 
and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right and left and right foot, left foot, Father Abraham, and many sons, and many sons, God, Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right and left and right foot, left foot, turn around, Father Abraham, and many sons, and many sons, and Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right and left and right foot, left foot, turn around, heads up, Father Abraham, and many sons, and many sons, and Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right and left and right foot, left foot, turn around, heads up, sit down. Put your hands together, everybody. So this is the bonus. This is the bonus. Don't you feel good? Yeah. And you know, they say that you should not be sitting more than half an hour, even if, if you're studying on the desk or you're working, get up, take a little break, stretch a little bit, go back, uh, let the blood flow. Well, I said all those things about food, but here's what the Bible says. So go ahead. Eat your food with joy and drink your wine with a happy heart. This is grape juice, right? For God plea approves this. So when the Bible says that, if you don't know what to eat, you will think that you should go ahead and eat your burgers and your fries and your chicken with joy. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying, so go ahead, eat your cantaloupes and eat your kale and eat your garlic and eat your strawberry and eat your ginger with joy. For God approves this. So it's a joyful thing. So Hippoc Hippocrates was late. God did this in the beginning. Your food now become your, become your medicine to help you fight against that. Amen? Make sense? Let's go. This is bonus. All this is bonus. So this is the book. This is the book. You want to take a picture. It's on Amazon. It's like 15 bucks. And, and they have a lot of stuff in there. Like they show you the, the, the nutritional value of the food um, and how much you should take and how to prepare it. So it's like 15 bucks or so on Amazon. That's what somebody told me. I bought this from one of our call porters. Went to a crusade. I was going to make a health presentation. Call porter was selling this. And I just got it for like 15, 10, 15 dollars. All right, can I move on? Go ahead. All right. Bonus. This is the bonus. Here's the bonus. All right, here we go. So we're fighting that. Which one of these laws of health do you think is most difficult? Exercise? Hmm? Nutrition? Okay. Which one? All is hard? Water? Oh. Te who said temperance? That is it. Oops. That is it. But I'll get back to that. I think this other slide will say that. But let me get back to that. Here, what, I'll get back to that. But here, what Ellen White says. Yet, I am sorry that there are many of our people who do not strictly follow the light on health reform, eight laws. Those who, in their habits, transgress the principles of health and do not heed the light that the Lord has given them will surely suffer the consequences. That's what she said. If you don't follow it, you'll get the consequences. What are the consequences? The eight killer diseases. And there are many more. But let's do eight. Let's do eight. She didn't say those. I just put them at the bottom, by the way. Her, 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 um, 
Her quotation ends at the end of the book. I should have put a quotation mark there. Let's go. Now, that slide. The most difficult of the eight is temperance. Hear what she says. In the light given me so long ago, 1863, remember I talked about that this morning? Otsigo. I was shown that intemperance would prevail in the world to an alarming extent and that every one of the people of God must take an elevated stand in regard to reformation in habits and practices. The Lord presented a general plan before me. I was shown that God would give to his commandment-keeping people a reformed diet and that as they receive this, their disease and suffering would be greatly lessened. I was shown that this work should, would progress. Basically what she's saying that if you follow these eight laws of health, you will be able to deal with that. You will lessen them, eradicate them in some place, prevent them if you follow what God. She said this is the light God has given to whom? Remember I told you this morning, the Seventh-day Adventist church? We are the commandment-keeping people. So when I was telling you that, it's not because I brilliantly came up with that. Inspiration tells us that God has given His commandment people a special health message to help fight against the eight killer diseases. Are you with me? We are still in the bonus. There is a Greek writer by the name of Xenophon, and he said temperance is the moderation in all things. Oh, the all is missing. In moderation in all things healthful the, uh, and total abstinence from all things harmful. You know when you check history, all the wise men of old and women, all the outstanding leaders, they practice a strict health habit, a healthy lifestyle, they were healthy in their lifestyle. They did not, they did not, um, they were not gluttonous. They practiced it, uh, and, and especially in, in, in the area of fasting for their mind. Aristotle and Plato and Socrates, all these guys used to fast because they wanted to have a clear mind. So this guy is saying now that you should, if you should moderate the things that are good. So peaches are good, right? So you don't want to eat a whole bucket of peach. Cashew nut is good. You don't want to eat a whole bag of cashew nut. Just a handful. And the things that are bad, like liquor and, and can I add meat to that? You want to stay in sugar? You want to stay away from that. Let's go. Hear what Ellen White says about, um, about that's his definition. Hear what Ellen White says. Ellen White says, true temperance or self-control teaches us to dispense entirely with everything hurtful, and to use judiciously that which is helpful. So dispense entirely. If it's bad, don't buy it. Don't keep it in your fridge. Don't keep it in your pantries. Don't keep it in your cars. Don't buy it for your kids' birthdays. Don't buy it for your husband's birthday. If you know that sugar and flour and butter is bad, avoid the birthday cake. Make nice ones so dispense entirely and if it's good use judiciously oh today we have some good food on the table right excellent food i enjoyed the salad the salad was good but then i got another big plate of food that was like two meals in one right plus the bread you add that you could have three meals right there and the soup maybe four maybe three meals three meals good you could get three meals there I bet most of us ate all four me all three meals. You ate it. Right? If you're young like those young people, you can pass because you know you act more active. You move with more agility. We struggle up the stairs one step at a time. They run it up. Six stairs in one. So they have more agility, right? And you ate all those. I could could have eaten everything that was given to me. And this is the thing, not everything that's given to you should eat. All four of us here, we were so 
discipline, my goodness, me. And these three ladies, um, Shauna K, she hit, and she left back. So I said, Shauna, what happened? I said, I'm filled. I said, no wonder she looks good. My wife did the same. I, I think my wife's sister probably did it because we did it. <laughs> Listen, I did it. I wanted to eat it, right? But I said, hey, man, I'm the health ministries guy here. They're doing it. I got to do it too. See how it helps me? But I was filled. You see, the, the thing about it, most, let me don't jump, let me don't jump the gun, but you, that's avoid the bad things and go judiciously with the things that are good, right? And you'll save a lot of money that way. All this is bonus. Let's go. Strongest temptation. One of the strongest temptations that man has to meet is upon the point of diet. Appetite. I could testify. I can testify. Anybody could testify? Say amen. amen. Now here, Ellen White is a prophetess. She has divine power, right? She should have been able to overcome any kind of eating, right? She had a problem with a strange thing. She had an addiction to vinegar. What strange thing is that? Here is her battle. She was trying to fight against vinegar. Man, you talk a fight against chicken, I understand. Or fight against jerk chicken. Or escovitch fish. Or what? Or snapper. I understand, but vinegar? I already won that battle. But that was hers. Check how she, check her struggles here. For weeks, I was very sick, but I kept saying over and over, the Lord knows all about it. If I die, I die. Same thing as Esther said when she was going to meet the king. Queen Esther said, if I die, I die. In one translation says, if I die, I die. You know it in the King James. If I perish, I perish. Ellen White is now saying it when it comes to her diet. But I will not yield to this desire. The struggle continued. And I was sorely afflicted for many weeks. All thought that I, it was impossible for me to live. You may be sure we sought the Lord very earnestly. The most fervent prayers were offered for my recovery. I continued to resist the desire for vinegar. Oh my goodness. And at last... I conquered. Now I have no inclination to taste anything of the kind. This experience has been of great value to me in many ways. I obtained a complete victory. She did that with vinegar, but I, I put it there to show you that you could do that with whatever you have a problem with. I had to do that with fried chicken. Yes. When I got married, my wife grew up easy for her. She grew up as a vegetarian. Never tasted the joy of chicken, you know, delicious, nice fried chicken. So she doesn't know how the taste of that. I grew up with that. And I said, when I get married, I'll be a vegetarian. So I did not. I was not. So one day I was, we, we were in Michigan, and we were shopping at Costco, and Costco has these nice, delicious fried tendons. Oh, man. And I bought, I bought some, and I was eating it. And my little daughter was, she asked, Daddy, what are you eating? I didn't answer her up to today. I couldn't lie. What are you eating? I'm eating chicken. <laughs> you didn't even know that. That's, some secrets has to be kept. <laughs> but I had to put chicken out there. I said, Lord, the thing that was my thing was fried chicken and fried rice. I had a weakness for that. When I came first to America, I used to order half chicken and fried rice. Well done. If you're in New York, you know that, right? Half chicken fried rice, well done. Man, you tear that thing up. That was my problem. So when she had to fight against vinegar, I had to fight against fried chicken. And, and, and I thank God I overcome that. Praise the Lord. I, am, I obtained a complete victory. I could say that with authority. And at the same time, I'm praying, Lord, help me not to slide back. All right? Here we go. Yes, sir.
Okay. Um, looking at Proverbs 31, verse 5 and 6. Um, actually, no, verse 6 and 7. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Is this like a literal prescription? Like, does, does, does strong drink have its place, or is it more so he's saying leave strong drink to people like... Uh, <laughs> Can you explain that one? Yeah, I could, I could, I could. I could, I could say your latter explanation might be closest to it, but this is, what, this is the truth of it. The Bible does not ha have anything definitive that you could find, thou shalt not drink wine. Because the, the word that is tra uh, translated wine could mean strong or it could mean weak. But when you look at the whole context of the Bible, this Proverbs 21, 21 for example, says, wine is a mucker, strong drink is raising, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So you would find that there, is, you see all the bad effects of wine upon people. And there is always a caution to avoid that. Now, scientifically speaking now, that's the Bible, right? The Bible kind of leaned towards avoiding it. And then you'll find passages in Timothy, drink a little wine for the stomach, right? That's more like medicinal. And some of the medicines have alcohol in them, right? Um, but in terms of social drinking and socialization and so on, you will find that it is the Bible lean towards um, uh, not doing it. And if you really want to know the, the whole truth of it, look, look scientifically what alcohol does to the brain. It messes up the brain cells. But my, for me, my convincing thing is that I grew up with an alcoholic father, you know, drink all, all his life. So I know what it is, the damage that could do to a family. And so I decided personally I would not because I don't want to damage my family like he did, right? He lost, he worked hard, he, but the connection with his son is not there because of his problem with alcohol. Later on as I get older, I have to understand how, what he was going through. And then also what I learned from the Alcohol Anonymous, we used to, I used to pastor a church, we were upstairs, we would have service on Wednesday, and downstairs, the Alcohol Anonymous group would meet. And sometimes they start at 6, we start at 7.30, and I'll go and hang out with them a little bit. And one of the things they would say is that one is too many, and too many is not enough. Once you start drinking it, it creates a desire for more, and your social drink turns out to be more and more, and depends on your personality too. Some people could get, a, get away with social drink for life. They just drink a shot go to bed, eat their dinner, and there are some people, when they start, they become addicted. So it's, it's a risk, it's a slippery slope, and my advice would be, stay away from it. Make Thank sense? You. Um, so so um, two things, starting with the ladder. Um, we talk about um, vinegar, and I, I think, um, could you just touch on um, the, the, um, the pitfalls of vinegar, because I know um, even in, um, in this day, the, 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 um, the world's health um, throb is take vinegar and, you know, you would lose weight. And that's even our Adventist people are taking vinegar. Yeah. I, I, I watch on, um, maybe not Diane Sawyer, I read in a, um, one of those Good Health magazine years ago, probably 20 years ago, um, I was at work and somebody brought it in. And it says vinegar is one of the worst foods that you can ingest. And it, it tells you that when you, one spoon of vinegar ferments the whole stuff in your body. So, uh, um, so you eat fresh food and you're thinking that this is going to um, neutralize um, um, your body. It ferments and fermentation is not good because the body treats it as a poison. And, and so we go and we dump all those, um, what do you call it, um, apple cider and the um, um, pickles and the ranch and the, all those things on our food. Pepper sauce. Uh, 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 there you go, all those things and the, and the ketchup, all these foods have vinegar in them and it's the, it, um, the world says it's the worst food ever to eat. Yeah, you're right, you answered the question and you know what, um, well you see it there. I, I would lean towards, I'm a pastor first of all, but I like to have scientific things to back it up too. I don't have the scientific um, evidence to, to back up that, but what I do, I'll go with what the Spirit of Prophecy say for now. Some of you could research that. But um, vinegar has a very negative effect on the body. Uh, you see her there fighting against it. And also, um, you know, 
I have listened to some health presentation um, on that. The, the, the latest is that you avoid it. You know, um, many years ago, um, they used to say that smoking will help you fight against lungs disease. They used, you know, they say that. Smoking will help you that. And Ellen White said, no, no, no. Stop the smoking. It's not good for your lungs. Go get fresh air. So vinegar, I would say the same thing about that. She is cautioning against it, and we want to go with that. Yes. Someone is saying here, my wife, lemon juice, lemon juice, lemon juice. Lemon juice. Just to add to what he said, vinegar is acidic. An acid causes the foods to ferment. And once it ferments, it creates more acid. And when the acid, it burns the lining of your intestines, your stomach, and everywhere. And as a result, you get inflammation. And we know all diseases, they are all connected to inflammation. And earlier, somebody asked about tomatoes. The same thing, um, for some people, they cannot, their stomach cannot tolerate or digest the acid in tomatoes. That's why it's dangerous for some people. All right, bonus still. Let's go. Um, quick, some um, quick bonus. Um, one, one more thing, Pastor. Um, when you mentioned about um, the, the two, or, two or three slides ago about temperance, and I, I learned earlier that the, the fruits or trees that grows with a whole abundance, say for instance, mangoes, you have 2,000 mangoes on a tree, it means that you can eat a lot. Uh, stuff like pomegranate, where you have probably about 20 or 50 on it, you don't buy a whole that's case that's... of pomegranate and eat it. Oh, wow, that's, uh, uh, that's but, interesting. But you can, you can eat, you know, two or three mangoes. Sparingly. It, yeah, it, it grows sparingly, so you ought to eat sparingly, but sometimes because we are in... America, and we can go and swipe and buy it in abundance, we think that we can eat it in abundance, but that's, we should look at how it's grown. That's very logical. And, and the same thing with, goes with nuts, you know, like the walnuts. You got to work to get the walnut. But when you buy a shell, you could eat much more than that, right? All right. Um, she said, the only safe course is to touch not, taste not, handle not. And she was mentioning tea, coffee, wines, my brother, wines, uh, tobacco, opium, alcoholic drinks. So the, 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 the instruction we are getting from the Spirit of Prophecy is touch not, taste not, handle not. And we could add vinegar there too, right? No, I want to show you this quickly. Eh? No, no, not minty. These, these are, the, these are uh, caffeinated ones. Like, yeah, not, not the minty or the peppermint tea, green tea and... Excuse me. This, this is what I want to rush to get and then I'll, I'll, finish, I'll finish here. Um, you know, this site is, listen up, this is my last thing. I was aiming to this because I found it out this week, and I was so very, it's so interesting, especially when you come from, you know, the practice of food being a problem and so on. Um, this is called FAA, Food Addicts Anonymous. And here are the questions they ask. Do you feel you have lost control of food, of your food? Do you find yourself thinking about food and your weight often? Do you struggle to eat healthy foods and maintain a healthy weight? Check this out now. So they're giving you some things that you could do. On the website, I click there, and this says tools for recovery. And one of the tools is abstinence or temperance, right? So that they're telling you this now, that abstinence is one of the best matters to fight against food addiction and that lng white says will be our prevailing problem in the end of time um, now hear what they said check this out now this is what i want to share with you they say abstinence faa food addict anonymous believes that food addiction is a biochemical disease that cannot be controlled by willpower but can be alleviated by avoiding food that contains sugar, flour, or wheat, and working the 12 steps program. This is what I brought. Sugar, avoid sugar, flour, and wheat. And when you go to the website, they will show you all that they mean by flour. For, for you to get flour, it has to go through a process, right? And that process destroys all the nutrients of the bean or whatever it comes from. So you, 
and even all the beautiful flower that we thought about, like almond flower, spelt flower, buckwheat, oats, all the flowers. They've been they are saying it's a biochemical disease, and we should avoid sugar, flour, and wheat. I just want to bring that to your attention. Well, you, you, can, you can go on the website, FAA, Food, Food Addicts Anonymous, and you can check it out. Now, hear, hear what Ellen White says. If the indulgence of appetite was so strong upon the race that in order to break its power, the divine Son of God, in behalf of man, was required to fast nearly six weeks, what a work is before the Christian in order that he may overcome even as Christ overcame. It's a different perspective to when Jesus fasted. In other words, what I'm getting from this, and this is the first time I'm getting this kind of understanding from this. Jesus fasted to demonstrate to us that one of the secrets of de defeating these diseases is true fasting. And it is scientifically proven, scientifically proven, that you can defeat diabetes and cancer and osteoporosis if you add fasting to your lifestyle. We're talking about lifestyle diseases. And anytime we're talking about lifestyle, the first thing people want to know, what am I going to eat? What am I going to shop? What new equipment should I buy? A juicer? A, 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 a chopper? A what? What you should really think about it, what is what you should eliminate. And by eliminating from your life, you can fight against the seizing. So I want to recommend, as I close, I want to recommend fasting to defeat. We talk about all the foods, but I want to add one more thing. Fasting. Go on a one-day fast every week. Amen. Practice a one-day fast. In Jesus' time, they used to do it two days. You could start simple. You could start, if you were accustomed, eating three meals. Knock out one meal. Stay away from one meal. Do two. The next week, you can go one meal. And then the next week, you can go no meal. You can start with some juice. Or you could go cold turkey. You could say, you know what? I am not going to eat for 24 hours. From sunset to sunset. And don't, don't, you see, I've been through this. Sometimes after we go sunset, you may want to break it next morning. Go for 36 hours. I'll tell you why. When you, go, when you break your fast in the night, you're tempted to make up what you lost in the day. Anybody, any witness? You're tempted to make up what you lost in the day. And it seems to me that night eating is so dangerous that you could never be satisfied until you finish the fridge. <laughs> You give you a box of pizza. What? One second. I saw your hand. You give you a box of pizza. You finish that. A, a, a bucket of a chicken. You finish that. And you may, if you got two, you may even eat two. So I would say, then go for a 24 hours. Then what you could do, very powerful. The effectiveness of the fasting comes when you could do a three-day water fast. Three days. You can do it. I have done it for more than three days. You wouldn't die. The first day, be hard. Second day will even be hard. By the time you reach the third day, you don't want to stop. You can go four. You can go five. There's so much energy that you will get. Your fogginess of the brain will be gone. I'm telling you from experience, and I'm telling you from what this scientifically proved. Go and you Google it, or go on YouTube and check these cardiologists. Fasting is one of your best. And check this out. This process of going to the reformed diet or to the diet that God has given to us, to the new lifestyle, helps you to save money and save your health. Normal people will eat three meals a day. I don't know who told you you should eat three meals a day. Check the Bible. They were given manna one time a day. Check when Elijah was hungry. How many times a raven gave him? Tea, breakfast, and we said tea, breakfast, and dinner. Breakfast, lunch, and supper? No. Two times the raven came. If God knew that we need three meals, that raven would have come three times. 
to give Elijah food. Manna would have been falling four, three, four times a day. There are some people who are telling you, oh, they eat every four, hour, every four hours or every, every three hours. It's good for your metabolism. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Your body needs time to digest the food. It takes about five to seven hours to get a full digestion. So think about it. If you eat two meals a day and there are seven days a week, that's seven to 14 meals. If you fast one day, that's 12 meals. Let your 12 meals be the best 12 meals. Enjoy a beautiful breakfast. Plan it. Enjoy. Make sure you shop and prepare healthy fruits to, uh, to eat in the breakfast and do the same for a lunch. And you will see the difference in your life. And you know what? If you're young, all this may be nonsense to you because, you know, you're okay. But when you get older, it will come back to haunt you. And by the time you reach there, it will be too late. When you do this, you're not only doing this for yourself, but you're doing this for your children and the generation follow. My wife had it easy. Her father and mother raised them as vegetarian. Amen. We raise our children the same way. It's easy for them. But, um, and hopefully they will raise their children and that way and it will be easy for them. But those of us who have some bad habits and bad practices, and I like to tell people that my mother taught me to be intemperance. The greatest sin in the world, the hardest of the eight is intemperance. You know what she taught me? She taught me at the dinner table. That's what Ellen White says. Intemperance is taught at the dinner table. We grew up poor. My mother said, nobody's gonna, you're not going to beg food anywhere. So you eat until you're satisfied. Eat, eat, eat. I'm Indian in background. So we grew up in the morning, we'll eat roti. So my mother will cook four boys and she will cook and feed us. We'll eat two, three, four roti. Not good. When we were young, we were agile, very slim and trim. But as you get older, my brothers and sisters, they learn the same habit. I'm the thinnest of all of them. Me. Because we have been taught intemperance by my dear good mother. She's 80. And of course she's obese, but she's surviving. Nice person, good person. I love her and all. But that's where it's being taught. I want to stop there. I want to recognize your hand um, before we close. I saw your hand. Yeah. And then I'll hand it over to um, Shauna Kay. Wow, it's 528. Yeah. You guys are okay here. You live here. We live in Long Island. <laughs> so it was two quick questions. One is like, what would you best substitute for coffee? Uh, like in terms of that early morning energy. Yeah. And the next one is <laughs> the, the, the cravings, especially as a young growing man, it, the cravings thing where you see something, what's the best way you'd say realistically you handle the food good, cravings? Good question. These are practical questions. You know, you, know, you, you may have to, um, I will tell you a weird thing. You may think I'm just foolish. You know, some people will tell you, oh, go drink Roma. Roma is a good substitute for coffee. That's processed food. It's not good. You know what I would say, my brother? And it would be weird for you, but it would be good for you. A warm glass of water with some lemon juice inside. <laughs> and some molasses. And some molasses. Take away the molasses. Take away the molasses. Oh, it will be weird, but it will be the best thing for you. You'll get all the energy you want. A warm... Do you know that the coffee will spike up your energy and then bring you down back very low? And then you have to get some more. And the best thing for you to, to get your energy in the morning is to eat a good breakfast. It doesn't have to be a big breakfast. A good breakfast, whatever. If you, 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 whatever. You can, you, there's so many options. But stay away from the coffee. Go for the, the only liquid we should drink the, is water. Even those juices that we call orange Amen. juice and all these things, they're pasteurized. All the good stuff are destroyed. You may, it may taste like good, but it's not good for you. And you would not realize it until later on. But it has been working for you. Why change it? But if you really want to go healthy, man, go for water. Pure, simple water. And the next question is craving. Um, craving is a normal thing. I crave too. I just 
talk about my discipline in eating, and I was craving for something else. I told him, I need something else. I don't know what I need, but I need something else. The craving is there, but it will only last for a few seconds or a minute. And you'll be surprised to know how fast that craving will go. It's all psychological too. It will go. And if you drink some water, sometimes your body, you may think your body is craving for food, but the body is calling for water. Because remember, your body is about 70% water. Your brain needs water. Your kidneys need water. Your joints need water. Your muscles need water. Everything needs water. So when you have that craving, it might not be for what you smell, but for what you really need, that is water. Make sense? All right. So we leave it up there. Up to Shana K. Now what we there do There was rest. one more question, Dr. Diana Rain. Um, Auntie Carmen was asking about peanuts. She said she loves peanuts. And she just wants you to touch base if this is healthy. From my knowledge, um, there, 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 um, there are arguments for and against peanuts. In fact, some people say you not even should call it nuts. It's not a nut. It's a, it's a bean. Um, so there are arguments for and against. And I would say um, look, at, look at it on your... See how your body is resist, uh, are relating to it. You know, some people could eat it, some people can't. I know a guy from Guyana. He, he used to sell raw peanuts, and he would be chewing peanuts all the time when he's hungry. And this man is, was about almost 70 years old, was strong. You see it all in his face like he's young and, you know, peanuts. But for some people, they're allergic or they can't take it. So on the question of peanut, it's a question mark. It's a question mark. Okay. It depends on you, how your body can tolerate it. That's what I would say. Yes. Don't enter peanuts. Uh, it's highly can be highly toxic. I believe is the way it was grown and stored. And a f a research recently has found out that the way it was stored, uh, stored and grown, it is very toxic. You're right. Mold. Thanks correct, so much. Correct. And not only with peanuts, but all foods. You go some, to some supermarkets and you see how they how they how they 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 have those apples and fruits. I'm from New York, so we go to like you go to Brooklyn and those corner stores and so on that sell these things run by these Koreans and so on, and see the kind of condition these fruits would be in. It's almost like smelly and dirty. And, and then you buying those things and think you're eating healthy stuff, I stopped buying fruits from those places. I feel for now, places like Costco and Traders Joe we have and BJ's, the quality is different. They preserve, they, 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 um, they care for them differently. They transport them and package them differently. So it's very important. And I would suggest as much as you can, go for organic. Sometimes they might not tell you the truth. But err on the side of going for the organic because you don't want to, you know, as much as you can. Yeah. Huh? Ha what? Ham? H A M, like from the pig? The harm? What, what do you mean? Almond. Oh! <laughs> almond nut. How can almond turn to ham? One is beautiful, nice nuts. You see, almond nuts, excellent. I, I always remember, um, they, they would say that, um, we, we talk about almond nuts there, right? It's the king. Um, the yeah, king, the king people could debate nuts. that. But uh, the, the people like to call it the king. Some people, um, so the almond nuts, excellent nuts. But be like Barack Obama. He, eat, he ate used to eat seven pin, um, almond nuts in the night when he would read and, you know, in the evening time, gives him energy. He's also a skinny guy. He works out, right? But seven, when I heard that, I said, my guy is crazy. Seven? What is seven? But that's what you're supposed, a little bit, a little bit of almond nuts. Don't, the pound will last you for you. The yeah. pound will last you for three months. I, I buy a pound of almond. Yeah, right now I have around three pounds in my closet. Yeah, don't keep too much. You don't want to keep it too long. But here's yeah. the next thing. The other thing is that whatever works for you, you're an older guy, 
And if you're healthy and strong, who am I to tell you what to do? If something is working for you and working well, continue doing it. Everybody is different. Ellen G. White say that. Don't let your life be a model for other people. She said, I don't let, even though you hear all those things about Ellen White, she said, don't use me as a model. Listen to yourself. I'm going to tell you what the Lord show me, what is right, but you decide. So it may, you may eat a whole bag of um, almond nut, and you are over 60 years old, I would assume, and you're doing well. Man, who am I to tell you to change? I just say 60 because I want to, you know. I'm 80, 84 years old. Amen. 84. Where you say mm, you must eat, must buy, sure. If you grapefruit, no, no. peach, fig. Then you buy it and eat. No. Grapes, strawberries. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, organic. organic. Yeah. What are you gonna do? You gotta believe sometimes. Sometimes they lie. They lie. When you go there and then say, you you believe you can go plant food and it's a food for you by night. Me? They put fertilizer in. No, here. In America. There's different types. In a, in a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, so you, you don't know. But in America, they go and check them out to make sure that if they say organic, everything in a certain amount of miles around them has to be organic too because things can fly over and come over. So they monitor them. So you do your best. We're living in a sinful world. You might not find anything perfect until you go to heaven and get that nice apple from heaven. But in the meantime, you do your best. And listen, one thing I want to say, if you can, do a little gardening. Do a little gardening. I do my gardening, no fertilizer. I compose. The grass and the leaves, I have dig a big hole. I put it there. I use it as my fertilizer. Skins, peels from the kitchen. We use that. And it works. It works. Um, sometimes you have some pests. We live in a sinful world. I use natural things like neem is good with some, you know, little whatever. Um, you, you work with that. But we, we, we live in a sinful world. All right, my wife want to say something passionately. I want to say something about peanuts. It is believed that peanuts, when they, when they store peanuts, they, they, they get mold easily as compared to the other nuts. So that's why it is advisable to avoid peanuts if you're not sure about the source of the peanuts. Because once they get, it gets moldy, Dangerous. it's uh, become toxic, toxic for your body. So peanuts has a tendency to be moldy. She loves peanuts. The big fat one from Costco, the big size one. Right? Don't you? You do. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it tomatoes? The, the tomatoes is not dangerous for you. It's the seed and the skin of the tomatoes. The flesh of the tomato is very, you know, good for you. Yeah, and Gondry talks about that. She, he talks about the, when they prepare it in, 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 in Europe, they take out the skin through a, a heating process, hot water, and they take out the seed. Yes. And they use it a lot in, in, in Italy and all those European countries. But we don't have time to do that. We don't even know how to do those things. If you could, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Stay close to the kind of food that you used to have back home in some of you in, yes. in, in, the, in, the, in the islands. Um, it's better, and Gundry talks about that too in Plant Paradox. The food that we have like green bananas yep. and yam and sweet edos potatoes. and sweet potatoes, these have what is called resistant starches, which means that you eat them without putting on weight. So you want to use that instead of these flowery stuff. All right, over to you. Food. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Deanna Ryan. We are grateful and thankful that you came and spent the day with us. Amen. Yeah. 
And we thank you for your words of wisdom to, to your wife and to your sister-in-law. I know you guys have a, to travel back some distance to Long Island. So we just want to thank you so much. Is any of our elders here? Phillips, Elder Bailey. Elder Bailey, you want to come and we say a word of prayer and to close out this session? Yes, sure, sure. Um, all these things that we did were nice, very nice, right? But it would make no sense if we go back and do our normal thing tomorrow. Um, you will hear it now, and I'll tell you what, you go home tonight and you will order some pizza. You'll watch, you'll watch some games, and you'll say, well, you know what, it's Saturday night, come on. Listen, if you can just choose one thing out of all that we said to change your life, it will make a huge difference. And if you could do it as a church, as a family, as a couple, do it. I was, we were able, look, very quickly, testimony. My wife and I basically, well, not basically, vegan at home, right? And then um, we were putting on weight, she and I. In the, in, on Sabbath mornings, I'll tell you a story, even though you didn't give me permission, I'll take it. Um, on Sabbath mornings, we used to go when I was pastoring Sharon, I remember. She used to be upset with herself because the clothes wasn't fitting her. And she decided she's not going to get bigger size of clothes. You know some people do that? And she, so we took the 10 days gospel medical missionary program, pastor and his wife, and that changed our life. That's when we learn. 10 days it takes to make some difference, you know. We learned to eat two meals. We learned, now I think she's going on the low side. She needs to raise it up again. It happens. <laughs> but um, so, huh? <laughs> so, so if there is one thing that you can change, we didn't talk about all the, all the thing. We just based on nutrition today. But if you could take one thing, you could tell yourself, you know what? I eat every day, so I should exercise every day. I should walk for half an hour or an hour or three miles. I should go to the gym or I should drink water. If you could make one change in your life, that would be a blessing. Is there somebody here who would like to make one change in your life? Raise your hand. I want to pray for you. One change. All right. The rest of you, you're good. Thank God. You're healthy and strong. Dear God, for those of us who are struggling, we pray, dear God, that you will give us strength so that we can make positive, healthy changes in our life and be able to serve you better. And help us, dear God, to use this as a means of leading others to you through our lifestyle, through our example, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Deanna Ryan. Thank you. Elder Bailey, I mean, he just prayed and closed out. And if you want to say a, a word of prayer for Traveling Mercies for them as they travel back to Long Island. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Doc, for, for the presentation today. We really um, learn and we have been blessed with your presentation. So may God continue to bless you and your family in your ministry as you go through life. Let us pray. Father God, we uh, give you thanks, Lord, for this day. We thank you so much, Lord, for the day spent here. We pray, oh God, as uh, this time, dear Lord, as your servant is leaving back to his home and his family, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you may guide them from all accident and danger as they travel on the busy road back to New York. I pray, oh God, that you may fly all the traps the devil might have set, and may you give them protection and guidance and traveling mercy street they go right now and may you bring them home safely thank you so much lord for what we have learned today and lord as we uh, we, we go through life dear father i pray the lord that we may um take these with us and continue to um live it out in our daily walks of life bless us now we pray continue to have your way with us in jesus name we pray amen 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 our AY leader, Brother Kyle, I'm inviting him to come forward. I just wanted to mention something real quickly when um, Dr. Deanna Ryan spoke about the wheat. Um, it, it's, it's been told that the wheat in America is hybridized. And that's where we get all the allergies and we have a lot of people who struggle. And so we're encouraged to eat from the ancient grain family even if it's to mix it with your organic flour. And I'm talking about the iron corn, the kamut, the spelt, and things that are not hybridized. 
So it's the wheat in America. If I buy some wheat, usually I look from the product of Italy sign. I get the Italian wheat because in Italy, their food is supreme. They don't hybridize anything. They have to eat real healthy over there in Italy. And so just to keep that in mind, that we're encouraged to eat ancient grains, even barleys and, and you know, stuff like that. You can look it up, you can Google it. We are, have all this information on YouTube and at our fingertips, but that's the issue with wheat. We grow up eating dumplings in Jamaica, especially we put some cornmeal in it and cornmeal, make sure you're getting the organic cornmeal because most of the corn in America is GMO. And so when you're buying your cornmeal, make sure you're buying organic or non-GMO cornmeal. We have a place that we order our cornmeal from, Valerie, I can't remember the name of the place. They ground it when you order it. So it's fresh and your porridge tastes so good. Your cornmeal porridge, the best you'll ever have. I can't remember the name of the place, Valerie. Where? Hankery. Every time I have to order, I have to ask Valley the same question every single time, but it's exceptionally good. Brother Kyle, you're going the wrong way. <clears throat> and as I can think of anything else, and the reason why I put molasses with my lemon juice is because the iron helps you to absorb the vitamin C out of the lemon juice. I'm a big molasses person. I have bottles of molasses. I love molasses. Come over, brother. I'm just running and talking while you're coming to the podium. Good evening again, everyone. So, good night, good evening, whichever it is for those. Uh, so, more of a improvision. So, using one of the... Oh, it... it Gone already. But we're using one of the eight laws of health. I'm not sure which one it was, but it was temperance. And we're going to look at what the Bible has for us, what the Bible tells us about temperance. Because we can be temperate as it comes on to food, but believe it or not, in our daily lives, we have to practice temperance. Why is that so? This is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Surprisingly enough, it's a fruit, and we've been talking about healthy lifestyle and eating our fruits and vegetables. So one of the eight laws of health is a fruit of the spirit. And we look at, so temperance is moderation in thought, word or action. Those who practice temperance are self-control and show restraint in their passions and behaviors. We often hear the word used to refer to limiting wants. Alcohol consumption, or the temperance movement, was a next one organized in the 19th century. We look at Ephesians 5, 18. And do not get drunk with wine for... Oh, sorry. This is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. So this is where we get interactive ask questions. How can we practice temperance as Christians? How, how does it look to be temperate in our behavior on a daily basis? You go to your job and a McDonald's or a KFC or whichever one is right by you. And it's easy for you to go on the app and get a $5 combo and get both 10 pieces of wings or tenders, whatever the deal is. Whilst you could you, you could prepare a breakfast or a bre prepare your lunch, but McDonald's is just one minute walk. One minute walk, drive away. How do we practice temperance in this situation? Do we go to that McDonald's every day of the week and buy lunch because it costs us $2 and we, we fail to be lazy to make lunch? How would temperance look for us on a weekly basis as we go to work? Hmm? Practice, how would you practice it daily? Hmm? Staying from, from the temptation. Okay, so let's bring it away from the food now. Because we have some people, them can't stay home. 
if, 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 if every pananak, them reach. So, how do we practice? We're stepping away from the food now. So, your friend's going to the left, your friend's going to the right, your friend's going there, your friend's going there, your friend's going there. And then, look at it. We say we're busy, but every time a pananak, we're going to spend a two hours with our friends. What if we're using those two hours studying the word of God? You see how the temperance come in play? Because if you go Monday and you get an enjoyment, Tuesday we can't take a break, no. No, but we gone Tuesday again. Wednesday, we say, all right, we're going to come. Well, not even your friend in your acquaintance. You probably, you, you probably know, you don't even text you unless you want something. But him say, yo, we got this new hot shot. Chinese restaurant. We've got this new chat restaurant. We've got this new hot shot place. I, 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 I get up again and say, gone. Is this practicing temperance? <laughs> is it? So, and, and it's good I say, because temperance is, and, um, is the opposite to that of addiction. So, outside of food, there are other ways in which we can practice temperance. But they all go hand in hand because temperance is the result of discipline. If you're not disciplined, you can't practice temperance. But in order for you to be temperate, you have to be disciplined. So if, if, you, if Sunday is a week and you start your week on Sunday, you say, I am only, I am bringing lunch every day this week. But Sunday evening come and still in bed and you don't make the lunch for Monday. And you go Monday and you say, all right, I'm going to buy lunch this one day. You think you're going to make lunch with a Tuesday? Now, if you, if you say, you're going out one day this week, and you say the day was Thursday, because Thursday is your free day, but you go out Monday, you think that will stop you from going Thursday? No, but this is discipline. But how does this really matter for a Christian journey? Just like I said earlier, a lot of the things that we overindulge in draw away from our spiritual journey. We give in to these simple things that we continuously to do and it takes away from the times that we can spend in the word, the time that we can encourage our brother or sister or the time that we can actually use to build a more intimate relationship with God. So, yes, we're fighting the, we're fighting the diseases with, uh, with food but we also have a next disease, and that this is a disease of our spirituality. We're, we're in an eclipse. We're allowing the world to come between us and the, S, and the S-O-N. We're, not allo- we're allowing everything around us to come between our relationship with God, and it is causing a cancer on our spiritual lives. So, in order to relieve these spiritual lives, we have to feast on the food. The food is the word of God that we have to be intaking. So, if we want to get rid of the hypertension and the cancer and the obesity and all these diseases, we, we have to eat the right food. But if we want to get rid of the, the cancer of giving in to temptation, of overindulging in sin, we have to feast on the word of God. So, we look at self-control. Self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. It is impossible to live godly lives and please the Lord without self-control because our flesh wants only to please itself. I mean, I'm a youth now, so the, the devil is always trying. He always come with some new modern day trick. But this is where we practice, once again, discipline and self-control. It's not everything that's in the limelight is as attractive as it seems. The grass isn't always greener on the next side. So here it is telling us that without self-control, we can't live a godly life. Why is this so? Because without self-control, we give in to the flesh. But 
Here is the advantage that we have in this war against flesh. We have, as Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So this means that we don't have to fight against the flesh on our own. We have an advantage. We have the big man himself who we can rely on, who can aid in us, who can help us to be disciplined and to fight against this um, disease of the flesh. Because, trust me, if you try on your own strength to resist the flesh, you, the flesh, the, to compare to all of us, the flesh is 99 to 0 against us on our own. 99 to the 0. But with God, with God and leaning on God and relying on God's strength, this is how we're able to defeat um, the flesh. And this is how the devil works on us. He picks at the things that we love and we like. If it is video game, he might go release a new video game and he might go put something out of the video game. And you go, every night, you could have work 6 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, you're up on the game and you play. And you say, oh, I have to get this, I have to get this achievement. But this is what the devil is using. He's allowing this game to draw your attention away from the word of God. Though the game may be harmless in nature, but it is now used as a tool that is very harmful for your soul salvation. Because why? You have no self-control, no discipline, and you're not practicing temperance. So, once again, these are realistic ways we have to look at. Without temperance, as Christians, we are bound to, or not we are bound to, we will struggle. We will fail to be intimate with God without temperance, without self-control, because this is the only way we'll be able to defeat the plans of the enemy. And what is the plans of the enemy? To steal, destroy. Exactly. So, how you can hold back yourself, the, 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 the devil must win. So, and this is how we use temperance in food. And it is so that if you're disciplined in one area of your life, it can transcend into other areas of your life. So for some people, it might be easier to be disciplined with eating healthy. For others, it may not. But here's the thing. If, you get, if you're disciplined with eating your food, at some point it becomes second nature. You now have to challenge yourself to be disciplined in a different aspect of your life. But this is where you have an advantage. You would have known how to be disciplined with eating a healthy lifestyle that if you want to pick up a next form, whether it be the gym or whatever it is, you already have an idea of what it is to be disciplined. If you can practice temperance with eating um, the right foods, then at some point that same temperance will transcend in the other daily activities of your life. As I'm about to wrap up quickly, I want to leave with USA, sorry. So Romans 7, 21, 25. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind, and make me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Thank God for Calvary. Because God knows that we will be some human beings who will fail to practice temperance at times. And he came and he died on that cross so that you and I may have, mer have mercy upon us. That when we fail to practice self-control, discipline, and temperance, that we will be able to come to him and he'll grant us forgiveness. So as we go into this week, let us look at some aspect of our life that we can be more temperate in. Whether it be whatever we eat, whether it be whatever we watch, whether it be whatever we play, whatever we do, practice temperance as we go into this 
work week, this school week ahead, I hand over to our personal ministry as a leader. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to do the reading for the 40 days of prayer, and then we are going to group and uh, pray together. And after that, we have our council meeting. Um, are you okay with that? Okay. All right. Let us go. I didn't say you are to go, you know. I did not say you are to go. Stay and let us close off the Sabbath together. Why are we running away from prayer? Or it is the reading that you are running away from? All right. Our, our reading entitled Spiritual Baptism and a Fellowship Group. Spiritual Baptism and Fellowship Group. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and Fellowship Group goes hand in hand. Both are necessary for the Christian to grow into the fullness of Christ. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is essential for the care, for the care members of the, are the, for the core members of the fellowship group in order for the group to function as God intended. We see, the, we see this clearly illustrated in the experience of Christ and the disciple. The 12 disciples were in a very close personal group relationship with Christ. And one another for three and a half years. Yet we find them bickering among themselves. And the way to the Passover supper, just before Christ was to be taken <coughs> by the mob and ultimately crucified. But there was also rivalry among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. They had not yet attained the level of loving, commi committed fellowship with God or each other during those years. Simple being a part of the fellowship group of which Christ was the leader, was not enough to bring about a change necessary for